This video is made available by the Berea College Computer Science Department under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike version 3.0 license. So, the NAND2 Tetris hardware simulator. Um, this is a video that may have been useful a little while ago, but it exists now. So here we have the emulator, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit one of the projects. So in the projects directory, you have starter code for all of the chapters. And I'm going to take a look at the half adder, for example. So I'll edit half adder.hdl. And you can see that it's got comments. It provides the in and output gates for me because it does matter how those are named. So how do I, uh, what's the half adder truth table look like? Let's go to Google, uh, Googling, looking for things. Uh, I suppose I could have looked it up in the book. Mm. Uh, looks like a half adder. It's got some zeros and ones. It's got some logic gates. Yeah. All right, let's find out if that's the half adder. We'll find out if this person is right. So then I put in my parts. My parts might be... It looks like it's got a curvy line. It's got, it must be an XOR. And it's an input A, an input B, an output out. And I've got a flat line with the round bit. It's, um, it's, uh, it's an AND. It's an AND? I need, I need to be able to, I need a lifeline. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that's an AND. And so it has an A and a B and an out. And according to the diagram, uh, my input to this gate, A, goes to the XOR, and the B goes to the XOR, and the output becomes the sum. I have two outputs, sum and carry. And it looks like A and B both go to the AND gate as well, but that output becomes the carry bit. That's a half adder. I'm going to do a save. Then I'll flip back over. So is this half adder? It says half adder. All right. Well, you know. All right. Um, so we'll come back over here to the emulator, and you could load the chip. There's the load. That's not. That's load chip. Um, but we don't want to do that. You want to load the test script. This is where it's at. So go into the O2 folder and find the half adder. That's how you pronounce TST. You can see it. The first thing it does is it loads your chip. And then it creates an output file, and it, com it compares to some other comparison file. And then there's all this stuff I don't understand. But this says set A and B to 0, a val and output. Set A and B to one, 0 and 1, then to 1 and 0, and then 1 and 1. So this runs a complete test on your chip. So I always rewind, then I hit play or run. It's going to go through all the possible inputs. And you can see that it'll actually show you what the input and output pins are doing along the way. And if everything goes well, the comparison will end successfully. Um, I can take a look at the output file. That's the output from my gate. And if I compare it to the comparison file, there's the output and the comparison. They're the same, which they should be, because my gate is correct. And you have this for all of the, the, um, the chips that you're working with. Um, the ALU included. So one thing about the ALU, um, the NG output, so it's negative if um, the NG line is, is true if out is a negative number. Now I was confused as to how to do this and there's some syntax to do this that is not clear. So imagine you're writing the MUX at the end of the ALU. This is the MUX that decides what to do, whether or not to negate the output. Right? It uses NO as the select, and it's going to output out, but we also need to do some work to figure out, is this a negative number? So this is the final MUX that consumes the control line NO, which stands for negate output. Do -do. So I type a bunch of things here, which is awesome. So um, the question that I keep getting is, how do we set the NG line? 
and it's not at all obvious. Right? We know that two's com complement numbers are negative when the most significant bit is negative uh, is one. Right? So if the most significant bit is one, it's a negative number. If it's zero, it's a positive number. <clears throat> this means that we can only uh, express numbers in the 15-bit range. So here it is. You can take the 15th bit of out and set it to and set the output line ng to that value. So on the left hand side is the um, output of the mux. On the right hand side is where you want to connect it. So it says send the 15 bit 15th bit of the output line to the output line called ng. Uh, there's nothing obvious about this. It's not well documented, but I thought I'd show it to you because it's a nice way to grab one bit of a bus and send it somewhere else. Um, if you have more questions, send them my way.